Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov. Let's continue looking at this example where we have multiple pages and when we click on the page or a tab, it loads in a couple of seconds. While it's loading, it shows the loading indicator and if we click again on the tab, it cancels the transition. So I've tested the loading element right here, but here's a question. Right now the loading takes two seconds. What if uh, the loading took 10 seconds. Let's look at the script right now, 2000. Right, let's change it to 10 seconds. Will our test still work? So let's concentrate only on the test shows loading element. Well, our test fails because the transition doesn't finish within the default command timeout. Right, we can increase this timeout. We can set it to, in this case, 11 seconds. In that case, after 10 seconds, it should succeed. Up, uh, wrong timeout. Let's, it probably is in the second. Should have attribute data loading right here. Okay, so which command fails? If I click on this line, it goes and says right here, site contains failed. Right, so this is the timeout I have to increase to account for 10 second loading delay. Okay, so eight, nine, ten. Okay, perfect. Well, the test just took almost 10 seconds and 180 milliseconds, which is too long. Luckily, Cypress has a way of speeding this up. Cypress has a way to control the clock. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the same test and I'll say only. I'll say uh, goes quickly. So the first thing we want to do is stop the clock in our application. So the site clock command right here, it freezes all time related functions in my application, like set timeout used by uh, the application. So notice right now the test fails because once we freeze the clock, it actually stays at time zero. So, so once we are sorted that we are on the first page and then we click on the tab, Right, uh, right about here, I believe. Right, let's comment this out. So the loading started. Now we have to move to the next page. So when does it move to the page? Up to 10 seconds, right? So we'll say site tick and we'll give it, you know, let's say 10 seconds and 50 milliseconds, right? So we manually advance the clock inside the application by 10 seconds and 50 milliseconds. Notice how fast our test passed. So this tick, right? So the application was loading and when this tick immediately advanced it. So our application thinks that 10 seconds has passed, this set timeout fires and this function changes us to the next tab. Okay, and now we can verify that we are on a second page and we can remove our long timeout because this is really not necessary anymore because our test now is very, very fast. Now, another thing you can say after we finish verifying, how do I restore a clock? You can do two things. You can say Psi uh, and then invoke restore. Okay. So after this, the clock now functions as normal. So 10 seconds will pass before this. Okay. Uh, another thing you can do, you can say site clock invoke restore. I think it does the same thing. If any doubts, consult the site clock or site tick documentation.